Let's take a look at increasing division patterns. Complete the pattern. Well, the first one is 7 divided by 7. We know 7 divided by 7 is 1. The next one is 70 divided by 7. Now, the nice thing is when there's a 0 on the end, you can say, well, 7 divided by 7 had given us 1. And since there was a 0 on the end of 70, there's going to be a 0 on the end of our answer, 10. So 70 divided by 7 would be 10. Now that works even if you have more than one zero. For example, in the next one, we have two zeros, right? 700. Well, you can say 7 divided by 7 is 1. And since there were two more zeros on that for 700, there's going to be two zeros on my answer for 100. Okay, well, what number divided by 3 would give us 2? Well, that would have to be 6, right? 6 divided by 3 equals 2. So let's think about our pattern here. If I divide it by 3 and I get 20, notice it's the same as the, the first one, except it has a 0 on that, right? 2 became 20. So to get the 2, right, I would still think 6 divided by 3 gives me the 2, but I would need an extra 0 on that. So 60 divided by 3 equals 20. And the same pattern works even with more than one zero. Here, if I'm dividing by 3 to get 200, well, I'm still thinking 6 divided by 3 would give me the 2, but I need two more zeros on my answer, so there would be two more zeros here for 600. Six divided by what number gives us one? Well, that would have to be six, right? A number divided by itself is always equal to one. So six divided by six equals one. Now, if I have zeros on that, 6D, well, if I divide 60 divided by six, notice the six divided by six is still one. We still have that same pattern in our first digit, but since there was an extra zero on the 60 here, there's an extra zero on our answer. So we get 10 instead of one. We can follow that same pattern here. If you have 600 divided by some number gives us 100, well, we know six divided by six would give us the one in the first digit. And if there were two more zeros here, there's gonna be two more zeros on our answer here. So we get 100. So notice, knowing these patterns for zero just makes it much easier for us to do mental math with some of these bigger numbers. 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. So if I have 30 divided by 3, I can still follow the same pattern with the first digit, right? 3 divided by 3 is 1, but since there was an extra zero on my answer of 30, or on the, the first number of 30, there's going to be an extra zero on my answer of 10. And it works with more zeros as well. If I have 300 divided by 3, well, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and there's going to be two zeros on that answer for 100. Six divided by two gives me three. So if I have 6d divided by two, that's going to give me 30. Notice I'm still thinking six divided by two is three, and I'm just going to have that extra zero on my answer. If I have 600 divided by two, well, that would be 300, right? Six divided by two is three, and I had two more zeros on the 600, so there's two more zeros on my answer. Okay, and notice this is basically the opposite of what we did with our patterns when we were multiplying, right? So for example, if I was multiplying by tens, let's say I said three times 10, remember that would be 30. You're basically saying multiplying by 10 puts a zero on my answer. If I had 30 times 10, that would become 300 because you're adding those two zeros on. So this is kind of following that same idea. We're just working with division here. 
So when we say five divided by five, well, five divided by five is one. And if we have 50 divided by five, well, that would have to be 10. And notice that's kind of the reverse of what we said with multiplication, right? Because five times 10 would be 50. Okay, and if we had 500 divided by five, well, the five divided by five is one. And since there were two extra zeros on the 500, there's gonna be two zeros on our answer, 100. Okay, what number divided by six is equal to one? Well, that has to be six. Six divided by six gives us one. So this time, if we get 10 instead of one, it must have had an extra zero on it. So it must have been 60, right? 60 divided by six would give us 10. And notice this one has two zeros, it's 100. So this must have been 600 divided by six. What number divided by two equals three? Well, that would have to be six, right? Six divided by two gives us three. So if I divide by two and get 30, notice that's the same problem as we had here, but with an extra zero on that three. So that means it must have been 60, right? An extra zero on the six. And of course you can double check, right? Half of 60 is 30, so this should make sense. For this one, it's the same problem as those, except it has two zeros on my answer. So it would have been two zeros on the first number, 600 divided by two. Four divided by what number gives us two? Well, four divided by two is two. So 40 divided by two would be 20. Notice this is the same thing because I had the zero here and I see that same one zero in my answer. So this would say two. Following that same pattern, well, I have 400 divided by something gives me 200. That would also be two, right? Four divided by two is two and there were two zeros in the 400. So there's two zeros in my answer of 200. What number divided by four is two? Well, that would have to be eight, right? Eight divided by four gives us two. So if we divide by four and get 20 instead of two, then it must have been 80. If I divided by four and got 200, it must have been 800. 